Hello and welcome to Making Music with Ableton Intro with me, Brian Spence. Over the next 13 videos, we'll be taking you through the key areas of Ableton's entry-level software, Intro. First up, we'll be taking a look at the main features of the software from its user interface to the differences between the session and arrangement views. We will then show you how to create a drum beat using the Impulse drum machine, create a bass line and a stab sound using Ableton Simpler. Finally, we will add some simple effects and do a quick arrangement before exporting a song to make it ready to burn on the CD. Okay, so we're gonna begin by opening up a copy of Ableton Live Intro. And as I'm on a Mac, mine's situated down here in the dock. Um, it could be also situated in your applications menu or if you're on a PC from your start and programs menu. So once you've loaded up a copy of Ableton Live Intro, you'll be greeted with this screen here with our uh, clip device drop area in the middle and a help section on the right hand side. This help section we're just going to close down for now, but if you do wish to go back and get some more detailed explanations of certain areas of the program, um, to get access to this, you just go to the view section at the top and select help view. And then here there are some lessons that you can follow along with as well. But we're just going to close this for now. And I'm just going to talk you through some of the main features of Ableton Live Session View, which is what we're looking at. So in the middle here, we've got our clip device drop area, and this is where we drop in our MIDI or audio clips. And so we've got an audio track and a MIDI track to do that on. And the main difference between the two are that audio is something that has been pre-recorded and has a, an audio signal to it, and something that's been recorded and we can bring into the project. MIDI, on the other hand, is more a set of instructions, so it's something that's created on the fly. So with MIDI, you would need to tell something to actually play C3 on a keyboard, and then you would need an instrument or a soft synth to actually play that uh, instruction out, and then you would hear the audio from that. So moving over to the left-hand side here, we've got a browser window, and we can quickly show or hide that by clicking this triangle at the top left. And if we go down to the first box below that, we've got our live devices. And then here, we've got our instruments, MIDI effects, and audio effects. Our instrument section holds things like our pianos or our guitar parts, which will be played out by using the MIDI track. So for example, you'd be playing your, set your MIDI instructions up to play certain parts of the keyboard, and then you would use these instruments to actually play those instructions. Down below this, we've got our MIDI effects. So though this is something that can only be applied to MIDI tracks. So we've got our MIDI instructions and these effects will manipulate those instructions. Our audio effects below that can be applied to anything that has sound coming out of it. So we can apply this to our audio track or we can apply it to our MIDI track. And these are things like delays and uh, uh, filters and things like that there. Below this then we've got our plugin devices and these are external plugins. So um, the majority of them are called VSTs, and on a Mac you can also get audio units. Um, but VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology, so these are effects and uh, third-party instruments that can be bought online, or you can get some free ones online as well. And then below this we've got a 1, 2, and 3, which are just simple browser windows that point to different areas on your computer. And then below this, we've got a hot swap button. And this is just something that allows you to quickly swap audio samples in and out of your project uh, into devices that support it inside of Ableton. Below that again, then we've got a groove pool, which allows you to add some shuffle and rhythm to your song. And these are all things that will be covered later on. To explain some of the other features, I'm just going to open up our project file, which you can open up yourself. It's bundled alongside this course. And I'm going to play around the track and I'm going to explain some of the features along the top here. So we've got a tap control which allows us to adjust the tempo of our song by tapping in the tempo on your mouse. And then beside this we've got the actual tempo of the project, so at the minute it's 144 beats per minute. We can just set that value ourselves by tapping it in. Then we've got a tempo nudge up and down, which allows you to quickly slow down the track or speed it up and it's more for live performance and DJing. Then we've got our time signature control which allows us to set up a time signature. We're going to keep it for 4-4 which is 4 beats to every bar and that's what you're going to want to use for dance music. Then we've got a metronome which helps to record things in and keep them all in time. 
And then beside this, we've got a follow and arrangement position, which is something that will be covered in the arrangement tutorial. It's not really of any relevance to the session view that we're looking at at the minute. Then we've got a play, stop and record button, and they're all pretty self-explanatory in that the play will start and stop will stop and record is something that you want to turn on to start recording in. Then we've got our overdub control, which allows us to either replace newly recorded material with uh, stuff that you're recording at that moment in time, or you can actually uh, record some things over the top of previously recorded material if you want to. Beside that, then we've got a back to arrangement, which is only relevant for the arrangement window. And then we've got a quantization menu. And in here, we set the quantization value for the track. And at the minute, it's set to one bar, and this is where we're gonna keep it. As the quantize, it allows us to keep our loops in time with each other. And whenever it's set to one bar, then the start and stop buttons that you can see on the main page here, uh, they will snap to a bar. So the start and stop instructions will only be sent once we get to the end of the bar for the stop button and will only be sent when we get to the start of the next bar for the start button. So for example, if I hit play, hit stop, this won't stop until the end of this bar. And then the same for the start, it won't start until this, the beginning of the next bar. And this is particularly useful for live DJing and tr triggering samples on the fly without the need to worry about any of them going out of time. So beside this, we've got a pencil tool, which allows us to draw in some MIDI notes. And this is what we'll be using to draw in our patterns for our bass lines and things onto our MIDI tracks. And then beside this, we've got a punch in and punch out setting, which is a more advanced way of recording things into arrangement window. And it allows the user to set exact points in the song where the recording will start and then where it will end. And then in between that, we've got a loop feature, which allows us to loop around a certain section on the song. Again, something that will be covered in the arrangement tutorials. Next to this then, we've got our computer keyboard, which is our computer MIDI keyboard control. And by turning this on, we can actually use our computer keyboard to play the notes, um, for example, from our bass line. So if I turn this on, I can use the keyboard um, that I'm currently typing on to actually play that, that uh, instrument out. And then beside this, we've got a key map and a MIDI map. And this basically allows uh, more advanced controls uh, to be set up for the use of your computer keyboard or your external uh, MIDI keyboard to control certain parameters inside Ableton. And then beside this, we've got the CPU load meter, which shows you how much of the processor is being used at any one time. And so the higher this value, the more unstable your project will become. And then we've got two buttons, our arrangements view selector and our session view selector. So we can click these to jump back and forth between the two views. We're gonna keep this in the session view, which is the tall vertical lines. And then we've got some advanced controls down here. So we've got our IO settings, which is for uh, audio routing. And then we've got some send and return, which is for setting up uh, external effects settings. So for example, setting up a reverb or a delay effect. And then we've got a mixer control, which turns on or off the mixer controls for each track. So if you want to access the volumes or the panning controls, make sure this is on. Then we've got a delay, a track delay, which allows us to uh, slightly delay a track by a certain amount of milliseconds. We'll turn this off because we don't really need it. And then we've got the crossfade control, which we're going to turn off as well. But this pretty much allows us to set up two tracks A and B, and we can crossfade between the two. If you're more interested in this side of things, then you're probably looking at a, a DJing or performance video. Um, we do have a, a How to DJ with Ableton Live course, which you can check out on the website. Finally, down at the bottom here, we've got a details window, which we can show and hide by clicking this triangle at the bottom right. And then on the left hand side here, we've got a show and hide control for the info view. And this is a very handy feature. If you get stuck and you want to know a certain, uh, what a certain uh, parameter does in Ableton, just highlight over the parameter. And if you have a look down at the info view, it'll give you a detailed explanation of that parameter and its usage. Okay, so that's a brief overview of Ableton's main interface. In the next video, we're gonna have a closer look at the session view.